Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Nave News Update. It's Friday, March 13th. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. Garrett Miller, a multi-instrumentalist, songwriter, and worship leader, was killed in an accident on I-65 the evening of March 6th in Brentwood, Tennessee. Garrett has been a musician since childhood. His father, Grammy-winning Native American singer-songwriter Bill Miller, first taught him to play guitar when he was still in elementary school. In 2012, Garrett formed the indie folk Christian band Bona Garden. Motivated by fellowship, not finances, he used his musical gifts to bring people together, whether it was through the worship services he led at church or making music with other artists. He leaves behind his daughter, his wife, four siblings, and his mother and father. Bill Miller said whatever led his son to walk onto the interstate last week will never define his life. He wants people to remember him for the way he lived, not the way he died. After all you had done Two years after Congress reauthorized the Violence Against Women's Act, Native American tribes can finally take advantage of one of the law's most significant updates, a provision that allows tribal courts to investigate and prosecute non-Native men who abuse Native women on reservations. As of March 7th, tribes can claim jurisdiction over non-Native men who commit crimes of domestic violence, dating violence, or who violate protection orders against a victim who lives on tribal land. For the first time, tribal law enforcement will now have the ability to intervene. There are epidemic levels of domestic violence on tribal lands. According to the National Congress of American Indians, three out of five Native women have been assaulted in their lifetime, and 34% will be raped. Getting to the heart of the VAWA provision, 59% of the assaults against Native women take place at or near a private residence. And as of 2010, 59% of Native women were married to non-Native men. On some reservations, Native women are murdered at a rate more than 10 times the national average. The Walmart Foundation has awarded First Nations Development Institute a grant of $500,000 to support a project aimed at building the organizational and programmatic capacity of Native American tribes and organizations focused on cattle and or bison ranching. The one-year project will also focus on improving their management of natural resources engaging younger community members in ranching businesses and or expanding access to new markets. This is the second time the Walmart Foundation has provided a significant grant for First Nations work in the area of Native agriculture and food systems. For more information you can check out firstnations.org. In America, the educational television program that is hosted by actor James Earl Jones will feature a segment on an upcoming episode devoted entirely to both the history and the current state of Native American artwork. In America is an independent television production and is currently distributed in most broadcast areas in the United States by public television stations. For more information you can check out inamericatv.com. Walking Dead producer Gail Ann Hurd and director-producer Valerie Redhorse have launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund an upcoming documentary about Wilma Mankiller, who became the first female chief of the Cherokee Nation in 1985. The film, entitled Mankiller, will be partially financed through a 30-day campaign on the crowdfunded platform, which began March 9th. The film has already received half of its funding from Vision Maker Media for PBS, and Red Horse has already shot 20 hours of interviews. 
During an unprecedented three terms in office, Wilma Mankiller led the Cherokee Nation during a period of growth and adversity. During her tenure, the Cherokee Nation saw its population of registered citizens nearly double, from 68,000 to 170,000, but Mankiller, who passed away in 2010, also endured lingering sexism as a group's leader. Her efforts were acknowledged in 1998 when President Bill Clinton awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom. For more information, you can check out kickstarter.com and search for Mankiller. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Nave News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.